Hello, welcome to a new vlog where I'm going to be focusing on some 2022 uh, new released books. Um, yeah, I've been starting this thing on my channel, like this uh, series on my channel where I uh, focus on 2022 releases so that I can like be up to date when it comes to all of those books. And I have a few books here from the library three um, that are due tomorrow and I have not started any of them. So did you hear that crack? It was my elbow. Cool. So the first one I have is Devil House by John Darnell. All I'm gonna say is I did read a book by him once upon a time and I gave it a one star. I do not give out one star, it's just willy-nilly like that. It was just a really bad book. I'm gonna give him a second chance. Uh, so that's what we're doing with this. I have an audiobook and that's probably, I think that's due in like three days, that audiobook. So this is something that I'm going to try and prioritize for the next day or two. It's not gonna take me one, like I can't read these all before the books are due tomorrow. Plus, not to mention, I have a shit ton on Libby right now. Like there's a book um, that I'm reading right now on Libby and I have until tomorrow, but I'm not anywhere close, but I've got to finish that book. There's five people waiting afterwards, so I have to finish it today. Hi, I have to finish that fucking book today. Ugh, I'm gonna do a lot of reading today. Anyways. Book number one. The next one, um, I found this at the library, Mickey 7. Um, I don't know that much about it. All I know is, ooh, wow, this text is big, bitch. Wow, like really big, okay. I was I was intimidated. I thought this was gonna be a mm, low key, like, um, what's his name? Like Martian and Project Hail Mary dude. Whatever his name is, like his science fiction shit, like I thought it was gonna be like kind of dense, but I don't think it will be, so that's good. Um, but I'm really excited to read this. I know that like Gabby Reads read it um, for a vlog at one point, and I was like, okay. I, I kind of, I, 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 I fuck with that kind of sci fi too, where it's like small little elements here and there of sci fi, like clone type shit. Like I fuck heavy with that, so. And space shit. I love, I love space things too. I think I'm gonna like this one a lot. And then I also have uh, The School for Good Mothers, which is a book that I'm also really excited to read. I just really like the cover and I think it's a very intriguing thing, like concept. I've heard like a lot of things about it. Like there was like somebody I follow and they were like, who here has read this book and wants to talk about it? Cause I need to talk about it right now. <laughs> and so that made me really eager to uh, want to try and read it. So those are the three books that I have physically. And then I have two more books that I'm probably going to try and get to, oh, maybe more than two. I don't know. I have a lot of things on Libby right now that are just available for me to read. And lots of them are 2022 releases. One of them is Joan is okay. I don't know if I'm ever going to actually get to that one, but I have it on my Libby. It's probably due in like four days. So there's that. And then I have a very nice girl, I believe the book is called, um, which is on my Libby right now. And I don't know what it's about. By the way, I know what none of these are about for the most part, truthfully, um, but you know, we'll figure that shit out together. Uh, and then I have, oh, tell me an ending uh, on there too. All I know is I heard CJ Reads talk about it. She was, she had the arc and um, I was like, Oh my god, like I want to read that so bad, like I'm gonna have to go find that. And then she said it was an arc, like that it wasn't even out yet. I was like, fuck, I'm gonna have to wait. But I found it on Libby, and now I have it available to me right now in this moment. So Cat is trying to like escape through the window, Jesus. He was like climbing, like pawing at the window. But um, when she was describing that book, I was like, okay, that I am heavily intrigued. So hopefully it's good. Again, don't know what any of those books are about. I wish I did so that I could kind of describe it a little bit more, but I can't. So yeah. Oh, also I'm reading a novel obsession right now. That's a book I'm reading and that I have like only today to read. And that's also a 2022 release. So what I'm saying here is, uh, I guess I'm going to be talking about like six different freaking books in this video. And I hope it's not too long because the first vlog that I ever did, I underestimated how long it was going to take for me to talk about all the books that I was reading. Um, but I had a lot to say about a lot of them and that fucking video ended up being an hour and 20 minutes long and I don't want to have that happen again, but I can't make any promises, so. Six books is a lot to talk about, like a lot. But I'm gonna try to get to them. Like this is also like kind of a very reading crunch 
type of week because like I said like these books are due tomorrow my one that I'm reading right now is due tomorrow um and then the other two are you know they got at least 11 days still so there's that but this isn't to mention though I'm trying to read all the international booker uh books uh booker prize books you know and I, w I, I was in the middle of cursed bunny I still am, I should say. I'm still in the middle of Cursed Bunny and I've been reading them for like four days, like a little bit too long, but it's because I've been like in such a kind of slump. The last book I finished was The Books of Jacob, but like, boy, was that a fucking last book to have just finished, holy shit. So here we are. I have a whole list of books that I've been needing. Like I have my fucking reading cut out for me. So I'm going to vlog this experience so that hopefully it keeps me on track or something. I don't know. Who's ready to read? I feel like I look visceral right now for some reason. Like when I like put my uh, camera up to this like angle, I feel like I just look intense. I don't know. Anyways, I just wanted to sit here and say that I am 69% of the way through a novel obsession. But mm, I've had a few of these ciders. I'm just in the mood to some, jam to some tunes, but I, like I said, this book is due tomorrow. Will I stay up late tonight to read it, or will I just not finish it? I really want to finish it. I want to know where it goes. I am loving this book. I literally said on my story, I'm giving it a four star, but then it mentioned the 1975, my favorite band. Hi. Here's a shirt from the 1975. This is the 1975 merchandise shirt. Um... I love them so much and I was like will that alone make me give it a five I don't know but what I'm feeling right now is like listening to some goddamn music that's what I feel like right now so should I just do that because like I can't think of anything else but to do such a thing and it's not really helping my reading you know so should I do that? And I'm so tired too. Like, I feel like I crash any minute. I feel like I could just go to sleep. But then I will not be able to finish this book if I sleep for the night either. So. It's 9.49 at night. My boyfriend's so good at, like, having a strict uh, schedule. And it's helping me a lot. Because I, ha I used to have really, really bad insomnia. Like, super bad. Like, I wouldn't go to sleep until, like, 4 a.m. Um... And then I'd have to wake up at 6 a.m. Like, my body would force me awake at 6 or 7 a.m. But, like, I have gotten into a schedule where I don't go to, like, I don't feel tired until 10. And then I wake up at, like, 8. And it's really good for me, right? But it's kind of annoying because it's like, okay, I'll be sleeping for 8 hours. i just be unconscious for 8 hours? Are you kidding? I'm going to listen to music. <laughs> I'm gonna shoot myself in the head when I realize what I've done. <laughs> I'm sorry, I shouldn't say that. I'm gonna be really sad when I realize what I have done. No, no. Oh, I look stupid. This looks like a dumb angle. Um, but we're gonna go with it because it's all I got right now. I just want to say, I am in my boyfriend's car right now. He's at work. I do this here and there sometimes. This is a bit of a throwback. I haven't done this in a while. But I just needed a time to uh, really bust out some books, you know? He's only there, going to be there for four hours. But I think I, I got a book or two up my sleeve that I could start. I could. I think I can finish uh, Cursed Bunny, which is not even for this vlog. But it's for something else. And I think I can finish that book here and now. I only have 119 pages left in it. And then I'm going to like, I started actually Devil House, which I actually kind of need to finish it. Maybe I should start with that. I only got to page 25, but that's where I'm at. I used toilet paper to fucking hold my thing. Okay. I finished a novel obsession and I definitely want to talk about it, but maybe not here right now because mm, I'm hot and just want to get to the reading. I don't want to like take up too much time talking. Um, but that's just an update. I'm here in the car and I'm going to try and, uh, get a chunk of this done today. If I get bored of it at any point in time, which hopefully I don't, because again, I have to finish this like today and tomorrow. That's, that's how long I have. So, you know, um, but if I do, 
too tired of it at all. I also have this book. I can't wait to read this one. And I also have an audio book with it. So I can bust this one out pretty fast. That's my bookmark. That's my boyfriend on it. Isn't it cute? That's my plan. And of course, got my caffeine. Because it's all I need in life. Oh, and you know. My idol. It's about that time, ladies and gents. Hello. Okay. So, um, here's an update. I have been reading Devil House for the last day. Well, yesterday I read it. And you remember when I said, I was like, I only have like two days to read it. Yeah, so the return, the audiobook returned, um, this morning. <laughs> uh, so that was unfortunate. And so I'm going to take a break from this book. Um, because then I was just like, okay, I'm going to place a hold again. And it was like a two week hold. So it could, you know, you know how Libby works. Like it, it, it's, it's like the most amount of time I'm going to be waiting is two weeks. That's not bad at all. I think I'm probably going to get it a lot sooner than that. So for now, I'm just going to take a break from this. But uh, while we're here, let me tell you a bit about what it's about and how I've been feeling. So basically, this book is, it's about, um, this guy and he's a writer and he goes to this house and like he the the beginning scene is basically him uh obtaining this big castle like house that has a history behind it and uh that history like the very first thing that happened was a murder and then that house kept becoming like different stores and so there is i've i've read like three parts of it so far there's like multiple parts like i knew that was gonna happen you can see like the little small like black lines like there will be like different parts and so the first part was following this author like i just said um and he was obtaining the house and he was going to make a story with the house he's like a true crime author so like that makes sense, okay? And then the second one was in second person point of view, which I love reading things that are second person. But that part was following the woman who was uh, the killer, the murderer. So that section followed how that all went down. And then the third section that I just read was about... Well, actually, I haven't finished reading this section, but the part that I was, like, in the middle of, basically, like, there was a porn shop. Um, that's what, like, the house used to be. Uh, one of the things that the house used to be. And there was a kid who worked there. And um, then the person who owned that shop, like, closed it down. So then the kid who used to work there would always try. Just, he would just hang out with there with his friends. The last thing that I read from it, they started not being able to hang out at that house anymore. So... That's where I'm at. I'm wondering after this section with these boys following them, like if we're going to get back to the author or if we're going to find if, we're, if, if it's going to be a completely new thing. Oh, interesting. It's in this font. The next fucking part is in this font and I don't know what that means. Oh my God. See, okay. I'm actually kind of like getting into this one a little bit. Um... I fuck with it a little bit, but now I'm gonna have to wait. Like, I don't want to read it with my eyeballs. I feel like since I started it, I I, I have to end it that way too. I'm 60% in. I really like the author's point of view. I like that he was just, you know, he's like taking notes on everything, every small thing. I really like that. I think I actually really like reading about authors a lot. I'm realizing. John Darnell, like I had said earlier, wrote up another book that I did not like very much. This one's not bad. And that's my two cents. <laughs> so now it's Saturday. My boyfriend's at work until seven tonight. So I have all day to just chill and edit some things and read. I don't know what book I'm gonna- oh, you know what? I think I'm gonna pick up Joan is Okay. Because I have two days left for that book, too. <laughs> so, uh, I think I could finish it in, like, one day. 
I have seven hours left. I mean, seven hours left. It's a seven hour audiobook. I don't know how many pages it is, but I think I could finish that today if I wanted to. And then I also want to start um, the School for Good Mothers. The book is in the other room. I'm, I don't feel like getting it. I've been run, wanting to start that book today. So that's my plans for today. Yeah, okay, I'm cool. All right, guys, you know how I literally just said, uh, you know, Devil House not available. I, the, the, the hold let up. Well, guess what, motherfuckers? Guess fucking what? Devil House is ready to borrow already, bitch. Bitch. Honestly, what a lucky day for me. I'm going to fucking finish this book today, right now, right here, right now. That's what I'm going to be doing. Okay. Yay me. I'm so glad because I was like, it's so annoying that I have to just kind of like. <laughs> Anyways, long story short, I'm going to be reading Devil House now, bitch. Wow. Hi. Um, so uh, my boyfriend's hair was in my headband. I am feeling a certain kind of way here. And that way is hungry. I have to sneeze. So, update. I have been reading this all day. And I am um, almost done. Like, literally, I I have, like, um, I'd say 34 pages left. But I'm so hungry. I can't concentrate on anything. I can't do anything except for, like, watch YouTube. Like, you know what I mean? I feel I get this way sometimes and this and I'm I am feeling that way right now. And so I'm like, okay, should I get something to eat? And then that's a whole nother thing. You know, I texted my boyfriend and I was like, I really want sushi. Well, I didn't say that. I was just like I, I was kind of putting a hint out. I was like, Ugh, like the only thing I can think about is sushi. And then he answered, but he does he didn't respond to the sushi thing, so that was me being like are we gonna have sushi later on today or should i just get some for myself right now but now i still don't have the answer he doesn't get off until 6 30 it's like 3 52 i can wait a bit sure but it's annoying because like i said like i really want to finish this book which okay i still can and i might be being a bit of a baby but like okay i'll finish it whatever but i think to reward myself for finishing it, I should get some sushi. <laughs> I'm addicted to that shit, bro. Um, it's It really is the only thing I can think about right now. I'm sorry, nobody wants to see any of this, but I'm just now realizing this tooth is getting even more crooked than it uh, ever was before in my life. Like, I always, it was always kind of like, you know, a little crooked, but it's like getting worse. I did need braces when I was younger, I just didn't get them, so that's the result of that, I suppose. Then, like, you know, I was supposed to start, like, Joan is okay and finish, start and finish. Don't know if that's happening, but if it's not happening today, it's not happening at all, so there's that. Um, I just want food. We don't even have anything, like, we don't have, like, even if I was like, okay, let me satisfy myself with, like, a lunch of sorts we don't have that for me to even do so it's really like sushi or nothing wow i'm just now realizing that unless you get something from work you know because he works at a grocery store like if he gets something when he gets off that he can make but i want sushi Hi, I'm just here to say that I finished Devil House. I got 37% of the way into Joan is Okay, and I'm just getting sushi tonight. Ah! I'm so happy um, that I'm getting sushi. That's all that matters, if you can't tell. This is so annoying, because every single time I like put on my camera, I'm like, oh yeah, that exists on my forehead right now. It's just kind of been there for like days weeks even don't know i don't know but um that's that's my only update i know it's like talk about books bitch that's what we're here for <laughs> no
Hello, how are you? Here to update. I told myself I wasn't going to like film in this thing anymore, this comfy, just because I don't know, I feel like I just look weird in it. Every time I like edit, I'm like, why did I decide to wear that? But you know, I think today's gonna be a little bit of an exception because it is fucking freezing in here. And the reason being, it is dumping snow right here on our April 18th. The day after Easter, like Easter, spring equinox type shit. And it's just pouring down snow. Let me show you. Like, honestly, it's quite rude that this decided to happen, but also like kind of a vibe. Like, let's just put some like cute little music right here. Psych, okay. So that's where we're at right here right now. Um, and we're also at the fact that I have finished Devil House. I think I already said that, but uh, now it's time to talk about it. Okay, because I have opinions. <laughs> I gave it a three star and I mean, yeah, that's just like a basic mediocre book. I said already that I given John Darnell a chance <laughs> before I, uh, I read one of his books and I gave it a one star. And so I read this and I was like, okay, it's better than that one star that I gave. There's a lot of parts that I really enjoyed, but I think overall it's very clumped together and like, I don't know, let me explain. So basically Devil House is uh, in five different parts. Uh, basically, the first part is uh, of Chandler. He is a writer and he is going to be writing about the mishaps that happened in this house um, in the 80s or whatever. Um, because like I said, he's a, a true crime writer. So he was going to, you know, do his next book on this uh, incident that happened in the 80s. The second part is of it's in like second point person point of view and it's like about a teacher who uh, accidentally well I should say accidentally but who in, in, in self-defense killed some kids who snuck into her house part three I remember what part three is about Oh, part three, I'm pretty sure is, yeah, okay. That's about like the, these two boys who, I said this in, in my like one clip, like basically this is about like the two boys who were, one of the kids was working in this like porno shop and then it closed down, stopped being that. And um, a whole bunch of things happened in that section. That's like the longest section. Um, and probably the most intriguing, at least in my opinion, like that's the most like, that's the part I liked the most. And then there's this fourth part called Song of Gorbonian. And Gorbonian. And I've got to say, I don't know what the connection to the actual rest of the story is with this. So that's saying something, right? Like, um, basically, it's written in this, like, really shitty fall. I've sa I said that already, but, like, like, I showed you. Look at this font. I'm so glad I was reading this with an audiobook because I don't think I'd be able to read this. Like, this would... I would probably have to had to skip this, which I could have skipped it anyways, because it really doesn't do anything for this fucking story. I don't understand why it's in there. Um, but basically, it's like an old timey story about a knight. <laughs> like, that's what that is. And then the next part. Also, I said there's like four parts, uh, five parts. There's like probably like seven, I think. Uh, the next part just says devil house i don't remember what that's about i guess it goes back to the house because the third part also is called devil house i forget what this is specifically i think oh okay yeah so this is kind of like after uh everything has gone down like i said like some mishaps go down in that third part like this is like after everything goes down and it's kind of like uh getting people like angela like and then like seth it's getting like their point of view. The sixth part, oh, the sixth part is about like the book that this Chandler wrote once upon a time, like his only success of a book. Um, he talks all about it in this sixth part. And then the seventh part is about, oh, still about Chandler. <laughs> So that's what this book is and isn't that so interesting so most of it is about Chandler and his artistry his author ring <laughs> yeah there was no thrills or suspense I'm like is this a horror book 
I think it's considered a horror and it's probably going to be on like the Goodreads uh, choice <laughs> uh, awards for horror and it's just like so annoying because I would not consider this horror. Um, there was not that many thrills or anything. There wasn't anything to like the only interesting part like the only like thrilling part at least in my opinion was the second part when the teacher was like oh, fuck am I being stalked and like she like shit happened in that second part and that was really intriguing and i was like okay fuck like that was i thought i was gonna be hooked after that but then they keep it that's another thing it keeps changing <laughs> uh big momentum and it's actually kind of really annoying and i don't think that makes for a good horror story in the slightest i feel like these could have been like different short stories like i felt the need to like rate them like each section in a different way um, because like I said, some parts were like, I would probably give them like a four out of five, but then other parts I would have given like a one out of five, you know what I mean? So altogether it came to be a three. Um, but maybe I am being a little generous and maybe John Darnell is just not for me or he just sucks. I don't know. I'm sorry. That's kind of rude to say. I didn't really like it. Didn't care for it. The next book that I read, um, I finished Joan is Okay. I loved that book. Um, I gave it a four star. It wasn't like a favorite, a new favorite or anything, but it was definitely very intriguing. Basically, Joan is Okay uh, features a Chinese American named Joan, and she is a uh, doctor and a workaholic like absolute workaholic like she doesn't take any breaks and that was actually you know a, a turning point in this story is that somebody had to like somebody a higher up had to come in and talk to joan and be like you need to take a break like you're supposed to have like at least a month's worth of breaks like like literally it's not even legal for you to be working as much as you do and she'll take people's shifts and like all of this stuff honestly that sounds like me i had once upon a time when i worked at um this place called sierra like literally multiple times the managers had to be like okay you have to mm, stop they were like you can't work uh tomorrow because you work seven days in a row and you just like legally you can't work eight days in a row like things like that would always happen with me so i think i get that workaholic uh type vibe that joan has but she also is because she like you know she just doesn't care about anything else she seems like some might say, say passionless um she just doesn't like this is just all she she wants to know you know what i mean but she's told that she needs to take a break she's told that she needs to go on vacation and um right before like this is kind of a turning point in this book her father has died so she literally went to china and stayed there for like two days like not even like she went there for the funeral and then like came back the next day in the morning so that she could work again and people were like that's questionable like your father just died are you okay like you know trying to get like I guess that's like you know kind of the title of Joan is okay like you know when it's like uh very like sarcastic like it's kind of like tongue-in-cheek Joan is okay but like really she's fucking not anyways so yeah her dad had just died she still wants to just work 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 she's found out that she uh needs to take vacation and then this vacation right before uh this is so good okay this is when the pandemic happens uh you know good old COVID-19 was happening um in this time or it just started happening and she went to Wuhan because that's where her parents lived and that's where the funeral was so she knew about the virus before coming back to America and uh, everybody else knowing about it like you know a little bit later on um and you know it talks about it and sh she's talking about you know uh like the virus before it even has a name before people know what's really going on like and it's a really cool perspective to see i really really fucking loved that and uh yeah it's a really short book like it was like 220 pages so if you have the time for that i actually suggest that you read it like if that sounds interesting to you because i really fucked heavy with that and i kind of want to see more like doctors because again, she was a doctor, so it's like her experience with a fucking pandemic and the pandemic that we've grown to know so much. Like, 
it's just a very very interesting um perspective that i appreciated the fuck out of um and it also you know talks about being a workaholic just working your life away like what does that lead to what does that mean for you and um i think that 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 there's a lot to say for that um so yeah those are the two books that i read um so far for this vlog i really liked one and then just really didn't like the other i think i actually might because i want to be so much more honest with my ratings because a lot of the time when i like after i finish something i'm like okay if it was like nothing to me i give it a three that's like my, my uh, go-to but i want to kind of be more mm, sure with my both my ratings and my um reviews like where i have a definitive opinion of what i'm talking about and thinking back my definitive opinion is this does not get deserve a three star i know a lot of the things that i have given a three star i'm like this isn't kind of isn't on the same level i think it's less than that so i'm gonna give this a two star john darnell is not looking good for me right now one and two oh yikes but also it doesn't help that this kind of thing really isn't my mm, go-to uh type of genre but also this is actually something very interesting um that i should have talked about when i was talking about the devil house review but mm, let's just go back to that for a second when i was reading about the kid who worked in a porn shop um you know movies all around him it was actually really interesting because in universal harvester that's actually what the main character was in that too he was uh he worked at like a rental store like a a, a movie rental store and every time i was i was like reading it and i was like oh this reminds me of that one book and i was like universal harvester it reminds me of universal freaking harvester um that makes sense though and you know i also uh listened to this with the audiobook and john darnell narrates the audiobook for this one and for universal harvester so there was so many thing times when it kind of reminded me of it and like that's honestly not that good though like if you loved universal harvester and then you read this one and it like it reminds you of it then like yay for you but for me that wasn't good because i didn't like that book at all like i don't really want to think about that book i never wanted to think about it again but that cover though that cover is amazing i'll talk about that cover forever but the book itself is like not it um so that's it for right now um but if you're wondering what i'm reading in this current moment i'm reading a very nice girl i'm only like nine percent in and i have six days to finish this one and also tell me an ending so in the next like six days i'm going to try and finish those and knock those the fuck out um i'm i kind of started uh tell me an ending too but i'm like three percent into that so it's like whatever but i'm really focusing my uh energy on a very nice girl in this moment and so far i really like it it's like this girl she's 24 her name is anna and she's like an opera singer which is really cool i've never seen that kind of perspective uh you know that's like not something that you get for a, a main character a lot of the time especially in this kind of contemporary contemporary like hot girl literature type shit like uh for lack of a better word i don't really like that term but you like if i say it you all know what i mean so but i really like that uh a lot i'm i'm, I'm rooting for anna's character she's on a date with this guy right now who is like a bit older and also he was very like cold and distant the first time they kind of met not even distant isn't the right word but that he was cold and just like abrupt and she wasn't expecting it but it in intrigued her and uh i really like that energy that she's got going on yeah i'm really liking this book so far the one thing though is it does not have quotations which usually does not get to me so like you know when dialogue is speaking like it doesn't use the quotation marks and like usually the, i don't care i don't mind it especially if it's formatted in like such a way where it's like okay you can tell when somebody's speaking obviously like if it has like a dash or something or if it just is a line break but this doesn't have dashes and it doesn't have line breaks and it doesn't it's, it's actually kind of hard to tell sometimes when it's like dialogue or not but at the same time sometimes i feel like books without dialogue like obvious dialogue happening kind of make it go faster you know i don't think joan is okay had that either the quotes either so that's interesting it's always just a, such an interesting stylistic choice when people do that right i don't know 
Okay, I think that's all I gotta say. You know, my boyfriend and I were gonna get sushi at the place that we always get sushi at, but it's Monday and they're closed. And we did not even register that they were closed today until, you know, he like looked it up, uh, you know, to order the food and they were like, oh, and we were like, it's Monday. They're fucking closed. And now, so he's uh, at the grocery store while I'm sitting here doing this and staring at the fucking snow to get us some food because your girl's hungry. I have not had anything since. I didn't eat anything yesterday. I had like 10 bites of spaghetti yesterday. Here's the thing. I just have a very specific palate. And if I'm not eating what I need to eat, like I won't eat it. Does that make sense? Like we had spaghetti and I was like, I was not in the mood for it. So I could not eat it. And that's just where I get go. And like, I have literally only been in the mood for sushi for the last <laughs> week and a half week. And we get this vegan sushi at the place that we always get it and they were closed today my god and i'm like i really do need to it's like an addiction for real like i need to like have a few days yesterday we didn't have it and today i'm not going to be able to have it so two days like that's good for me like i need that kind of shit going down for me because oh uh. so yeah thank you for joining <laughs> what hello okay so um it's been like a day since I last updated. Honestly, don't know what I last said. I probably was talking about Devil House. Oh yeah, and Drone is okay. And then I was uh, saying what I was moving on to. So I'm at like 10% of Tell Me an Ending. I'm at 55% at a uh, Very Nice Girl. And um, I was hoping to finish a very nice girl yesterday but that did not happen i only got to like four like 41 percent yesterday yeah and then um also i realized that april is almost done with there's 11 more days including today of april and i have like 11 more books to read not for this vlog or anything obviously so like focusing on the books for this vlog specifically i have four more to read tell me an ending a very nice girl and then a book that i just started today i have an audiobook available like for me so i've been reading along with the audiobook and it's this one right here the school for good mothers holy fuck i love this book so far i'm at page 107 um and i'm hoping to finish this one today uh, on the audiobook, it's like three hours, 55 minutes left. So I can probably easily do that. Um, but I am loving it so far. Holy fuck. And like a very nice girl. That one is okay so far, but it's kind of taking me a while to get through it. Right now, it would be like a three star if I were to rate it. But I'm, you know, halfway through. So I'm also kind of hoping to finish that one today, but that's just ambitious. <laughs> so we'll see what we can do. And that's my little update for right now i'll talk i'll like k talk uh more about how i feel about this book so far right now um but i'm kind of holding the camera and like in the car so i'll do it like when i'm not doing such things but i just really wanted to say that this book is so good okay okay <laughs> hi okay this is kind of a weird angle but um I'm just gonna be uh, here to talk about this book that I still have not finished, but I'm working on, okay? I said in my last clip that I'm really enjoying it a lot, which is true, and um, I don't know how much I have off the top, like left off the top of my head, like probably a little bit more than half, but I'm hoping to finish it today. Uh, I haven't said what it's about at all. So I'm gonna do that right here, right now, um, before like I talk about my opinions on it. But um, basically, there is this woman named Frida, and she has a daughter named Harriet. And her daughter's like, mm, what, not even two years old. And the beginning of this book, it starts with, it starts with. Um, Frida 
going to her workplace real quick and like trying to get something from work and she left Harriet at home on her own and um Frida says that she just had a really bad day and uh she just needed a bit of a break and so she left her daughter at home and uh Harriet started like screaming at the top of her lungs and you know she was by herself so her neighbors Frida's neighbors called the cops and so Frida got in big big trouble for it and um she had just divorced from this guy named Gust they had um shared custody over uh, Harriet but after this incident uh, Harriet became Gust's full-time and so they had to do this thing where they like CPS uh, and the system was basically watching her 24 7 they would like put cameras in her uh, house and they uh, would track her like you know her phone and her computer uh, basically they had eyes on her at any given time and then she also had to have like supervised visits once a week with Harriet um, and that's what that came down to and all of that and that was like the beginning part of it and all of that was also like was really frustrating like obviously Frida what the fuck are you doing why the fuck did you leave your two-year-old daughter at home for hours on end by herself you know and so um but then the system like the cps they were like like i said they had to have like visitations and it got really frustrating because the cps woman would just stand and ho hover over like harriet and frida and it would freak harriet out and it made it look and like harriet would be like you know weary and off and it would make it look like it was frida's fault somehow even though it was obvious that harriet wanted to like talk to frida and you know like hug her or whatever but then the cps lady kept being like no don't hug her you're hugging too long like play instead of like doing that and like all of this stuff like expecting things from both harriet and frida that they both didn't want they just wanted to be like with each other they hadn't seen each other for like a week and then it goes towards uh a court session and frida was taken to this place the school for good mothers and uh there's a bunch of them there there's a bunch of mothers and they all have their own stories it's kind of like a prison and they have to be there for a year and um they only get to talk to their kid like for 10 minutes uh a day that's like kind of where i'm at oh yeah and at this school for good mothers uh <laughs> they have like robot children um and that's like kind of supposed to be like a simulator for ha like your actual kids. I think that's very interesting and it's so dystopian like to read about like these mothers uh, taking care of these AI children. It's really uh, interesting. And I'm really eager to see where this goes because honestly I've been hooked on this book like since the first page. I really like how Frida has met these other mothers and it kind of like talks about that it talks about like all of the other people's stories all the other mother's stories and it's like really interesting to me like one of them was like coddling her son and she explained all the things that she would do like tie his shoes zip up his jacket like just basically like did everything for him and then apparently he had told his therapist and uh that's why she's where she's at something happens to her but i'm not gonna say what it is because that would be a spoiler I love the vibes of like everybody else kind of being in the same situation and everybody's like what the fuck is going on because all these mothers got at this place at the same exact time and they were just as confused as the next and I honestly love seeing that in shows and I love seeing that in uh books like where the, it's just like what the fuck is going on and uh, there's this this level of commodity because everybody else is on the same exact page. I really like when that is uh, 
being displayed. I'm really excited to finish this book today. I will. And then also, that brings me to the next thing. I've been reading A Very Nice Girl. I'm on 75%. This book is too long for its own good. I'm like, why are we still fucking talking about the same exact thing? I think it's kind of boring. But like I said, I'm 75% of the way in. I have like 170 more pages. Like I can do it. I can do it. I can finish it. And I'm hoping to finish that one today as well. Um, But basically it's about an opera singer named Anna. She's 24. She gets into relations with this older guy. He's like 36. Um, And she has a friend. She They live in London. She has a best friend. It's like literary fiction and like but nothing too much has happened like it's not like um anything thought provoking it's just a girl who's 24 who's an opera singer who is like maybe this isn't the best path for me to take and like that's it and then also like are you seeing anybody else and what about your like past divorce like to the guy that she's seeing and like that's kind of it and i don't I wonder what the blurb for this is saying because I wonder what it like, even says like and talks about in the blurb because I can't imagine I feel like if I read it I'd be like that sounds boring as fuck <laughs> and like it's fine enough like it's not like poorly written or anything or like cheesily written like I like I like the way it is written it's just very millennial fiction if you will type uh writing but I don't really get the point of it. I don't get what the f author was exactly attempting to say. Maybe I will towards the end. I don't know. Like at the end, maybe I'll like know where this is going. But this journey has seemingly taken a little bit too long for my taste. That's how I feel about that one. I feel like I could have been done with it by now. <laughs> um, If... Like, if it was just short, like, I could have gotten a conclusion by now if, 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 if the author chose to do such. But she instead decided to stuff, like, 150 more pages in there. You know what I mean? We'll see if I feel that same way at the end. But that's not how I feel right now. Okay. Well, that's my update. And um, right here, right now, I think I'm going to start reading this again i've been reading it along with the audiobook and it's been a nice time i like it a lot so let's do this hello okay so um i'm just gonna be here to say something real quick before i uh go on with this video because i guess i won't be going on with this video okay basically what i'm trying to say is I've been reading Mickey 7, I'm on page 80, and I am not going to fi be finishing it. I have a lot of things to do before the end of the year. I mean, year? Hello? What? Uh, before the end of the month. And fitting Mickey 7 and um, Tell Me an Ending cannot be in the fucking plans. It just can't be. I can't do all of this, bitch. So, I'm. those two books do not intrigue me that much i don't want to be doing that and i have another project that i wanted it to be out by the end of this month but i have a really bad um time management issues and so like you know two weeks will pass and it feels like two days for me and then all of a sudden it's the end of the fucking month and i haven't done any of the stuff that i d I wanted to do because I thought that there was so much more time and that's just not the truth. So basically, I'm going to uh, stop with this video. I'm going to eventually sometime later down the road today, I'm going to uh, talk about my full, like, I'm going to actually do my uh, review for A Very Nice Girl and uh, The School for Good Mothers. And that will be it for this video. And then I'm just going to edit it and then like get it out hopefully tomorrow. And like, that's my plan. So, since that's my plan, I'm in a bit of a crunch, if you can't tell. And, um, because I have another video that I've been wanting to do, like, literally since I started this channel, that I said I would do in April. Um, and 
it's almost the end of the fucking uh year so i'm gonna move on to those books and since i'm gonna move on to those books like i just don't have time for other things i just don't that's what we're doing okay thanks for being patient with me just kidding you don't know what's going on i mean like literally i'm gonna edit this and it's gonna all gonna be pristine and make sense so it doesn't even matter to you but to me it does okay i'm really excited to start this video that i'm gonna be doing for the next week or so or so like week or less uh depends on how fast i finish those goddamn books you know anyways um okay just my fucking finger okay so um i'm here to talk about the two books that i have not fully done my like reviews for so that is one the school for good mothers and then two a very nice girl and i think i'm going to start with a very nice girl because i have less to say about that than this i'm assuming because all i've got to say is i believe i've talked about the um synopsis for a very nice girl basically a 24 year old named anna who's an opera singer meets this older guy he's 36 named max and she like lives in london and like i said she's an opera singer so she very much like lives off of like like paycheck to paycheck like not very rich but then max ends up like lending her some money because he knows that she can't like be what she wants to be she can't like live up to this artistry with wow being poor necessarily or like wow like keep continuously living the way that she's living because she's like not living well she like has a roommate named lori i think and um like at one point they're sharing a bed and at another point they're sharing like a fucking flat with uh to a married old couple either way that i like it's not an ideal living situation but max comes in and saves the day somewhere in the center there where uh she's like living in her his friend's apartment but like they go to an apartment that he owns so like that's basically like kind of a synopsis and if it sounds weird and mundane and stupid um that's because it is <laughs> that's because it is <laughs> like that's literally what goes down um opera singing and uh you know acting is a very important thing i i i guess you could say in this uh in this story um i'm sorry i'm taking my socks off i just got back from a walk bitch what do you expect from me anyways um can you see this these are pita chip crumbs omg okay this is a little embarrassing but let's just put that out of camera but uh like, I can't even think about what else this book is about except for exactly what I just said. That's exactly it. It is so boring. I gave it a, well, on Goodreads, I said 2.5 parentheses question mark, uh, close parentheses, because I, at, when I first ended it, I was like, okay, I guess I'll give this a 2.5, but that's generous. So I'm giving it a two. Um... I don't understand what the point of this book was and I'm kind of upset that I fucking wasted my time reading it. Um, I'm kind of upset that I thought that that would be a good little book to talk about in this vlog because it's just not. It's just not. It was mundane and boring just like I just said. Like it, I wish that that synopsis or that explanation was just like a vague overarching thing of it all but it's not, that was just the whole story. Um, at, at one point she really wants to be an opera singer. This is all she wants. And then at some point she's like, maybe this isn't what I want. And then at another point she's like, this is exactly what I want. And then at another point, it's just, it keeps going. It just keeps going. And if that's what they wanted to make the main subject, okay, fine, maybe. But it was so boring. And then if what she wanted, if it, what they wanted to do was make the main subject about like, her relationship with this guy max like she he was married at one point and she was insecure about that okay fine maybe there but like 
also that was just like brushed over like all of it was just brushed over and everything figured itself out in a way that it would I don't know it's just like I don't know what the point of the book was I really don't and I, I, I every single time I think about it or try to think about what was I supposed to learn from this what was the grasp what was the point why was this published I can't think of a reason that sounds so mean but here we are that's how I feel so now on to something bigger and better and magnificent let's go for it. that's embarrassing just act like you didn't see that bitch <laughs> School for Good Mothers. Okay, I gave this a four out of five. Not exactly a five out of five, not a new favorite or anything, but damn well close. Like it was honestly so good. I said about, I said before what it was like about, you know, a, a mother who abandons her mother or her sister. Or, can I talk, bitch? Um, a mother who abandons her daughter, who isn't even like two years old at the time, and um. Her daughter ends up going to live with her ex-husband and it's a whole thing. This book was sad and frustrating, yet compelling and uh, honest. I think that it was masterfully done. Um, I'm always a fan of like books that provide a commentary about motherhood. Uh, and how scary and exciting and stressful and risky and important it all is like it's everything at the same time truthfully like you know motherhood and I think that mm, I could read books about that shit all day long you know one of my favorite books is Night Bitch which talks about that in depth you know and I think uh this also kind of talks about that but just definitely in a different way this book like expertly shows uh the very real consequences of what it can be like if a mother <laughs> wants to take a break or has a bad day as uh the main character frida keeps saying like that's what she keeps referring to the day that she abandoned her daughter she's like it was a bad day i i needed a break like type thing and like it caused a lot of pain for her to have this two second like fleeting decision but that's what it is to be a mother right like this book has like such a dystop dystopic energy to it because it's obvious that it was like written in our time you know frame and in in, in current days but at the same time when she goes on to live with the uh you know to the school for good mothers they have robot children they have like ai children and like uh that is and then it's also like a kind of prison type thing and that is such a fucking like an isolated and that's so dystopian and it's like you know the thing about dystopian is it's so it's so real yet unreal right and like it's it's both at the same time and i think this is a a perfect way of like talking about how motherhood <laughs> is dystopic especially being a new mother can be that it can have that real so real but so unreal type feeling and like that's just motherhood day to day right like but also in this story it's very much just like in your face like this is what's happening isn't this so crazy that this is how they are being like the mothers are being treated the kids are being treated the, like all of this shit i don't know and like if frida were to explain she can't she's not allowed to like like legally she can't go out of this school and this program and like talk about it right and like but if she were to go outside and talk about what she experienced people would be like that's unreal that's not happening in our here society correct and like but it just is <laughs> it just is in this book i think it does such a good job at showing that like <laughs> crisscross I guess I don't know I don't know how to like say it but you know it's it's an unreal feeling to actually become a mother 
or just to have kids because there's also stories about like everybody else there's also everybody else's story like all, all the other mothers one of them is like a single mom of like six kids and they're all living in different foster families that's unreal to her and another one is like it's just so distant in a way uh it's like it's not supposed to be distant like slap yourself out of it but it's like this is what's happening in this person's life she's also she was a teen mom she's very young and like has six kids um and then there's another mom who was like coddling her son and like she would like zip up his jacket and like <laughs> tie his shoes for him and he was like fucking like 15 16 years old and he's told like his therapist and that's why she ended up in the place that she ended up um you know in the school for good mothers um all of that stuff it's just like but that was never like it's if it's seemingly like it never set into them i am in charge of this whole entire new human being i have to show them how to be now what but <laughs> now what bitch this book also shows how frustrating the structure and the system can be like it talks about cps and it talks about the court judicial system when it comes to uh, custody. And lucky for Frida, like um, her kid went to, you know, her ex-husband and her ex-husband's new girlfriend. And um, although that was really hard for Frida to see and um, know that that was happening, she was lucky that it was at least uh, somebody that, you know, she knew <laughs> that Frida knew and that Harriet, her child, knew. Um, but for other people, they do not have that mm, <laughs> that success. It's a, foster, it's a foster family. It's somebody that they don't know entirely. And like, it talks about that too. Like um, the woman with uh, six kids who all went to different foster families, like it talk, it's like, I don't know what they're doing. I don't know. Like, she can only call one because they only can call. I said this earlier. I made a mistake when I talked about it. They can only call their kid once every week for 10 minutes. And that woman with six kids has to choose which kid that she can talk to for the week. Um, not cool. And it's like, that, that's what I'm saying. Like, it's so frustrating um and sad and but realistic you know of course there's no like actual school for good mothers but um it's still a thing that happens and you know uh i was in the foster system and so were like uh all of my siblings and like you know it's a frustrating thing to get through and also it's like you never know what <laughs> the person that this that your fucking child is going to is like and and most of the time you'll never ever know and even if they are seemingly a nice person on the outside you don't know what's going down in that household behind closed doors and it's just such a freaky freaky experience and i think that this book just does a great job of talking about all of that so if any of that kind of thing interests you, even though it's depressing as all hell, but if it really uh, is something that you want commentary on, then I recommend this book entirely. I know I absolutely uh, loved it. Like, again, four out of five star. It's probably something that's gonna be something I'm thinking about all the time because I keep thinking about it. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like. I'm glad I read this book because I knew that this book was coming out. I didn't put it in my like 2022 like anticipated releases, but I remember seeing it and then reading like the fucking like synopsis being like, nah. But then I saw it at the library, picked it up. And then I saw somebody, I remember I saw somebody on like the subway when I was like on my way to DC. I saw somebody reading this book and it kind of made me, I was like, okay, maybe I'll read it. <laughs> I don't know why, like that was like kind of a fucking sure sign. And then also I saw it on Instagram all the time. So I was like, okay, let me pick it up. And I'm really glad I did. It's honestly, it's got a lot to say. And you know, it says, um, this person, Liz Moore, she said, I'm in awe of Jessamine Chan's mom. 
mind and um me too me too there's more i recommend this book if you are interested so that was it for the vlog this consider this my outro i will be finishing editing this and then posting it tomorrow okay okay <laughs> Thank you for watching this vlog. I will see you very, very soon. Because I can't stop uploading videos and you can all, if, I don't know if you noticed, but I cannot stop uploading vlogs. I just like vlogging. Anyways, maybe next time I'll, it'll be a sit down video. Actually, I know next time it won't be. I know what video is coming up next, so it's just definitely not going to be. Every single time I realize I fucking end very abruptly and I'm just like, I don't really know what to say when I'm done. So, bye, I guess. <laughs>